So for today's manifestation moment, I felt it would be a healthy time to share a little insight on some of the chapters in the Rice Code book. So we're, Greg is throwing up our table of contents here. Our chapters are nine chapters, just to take a look at them. And I'll just kind of organically give a few seconds on each one, because all of them are really important keys at this time, during our awakening, during our ascension, and during our pursuit of our purpose and freedom of expression, right? And so step one, at the base of the pyramid here, we have villains. We've talked on the show often about that. And my personal lens is you have an inner villain, which is your own ego to transform and transmute that parasitic energy that also is wounded and wants to win, wants to be heard, or wants to fit in to the outside or to your past, as well as your transformations, you know, within your, your, your cosmic human design assists you in this because you can see your genetic path and some of your steps from the lower vibration, lower consciousness into the higher vibration within your genes. And so you have inner villains to work with. And then you have outer villains to work with, which means the villains in others, even those we love the most, just as much as the ones that we call our enemies. They have their villains they're going through. And so you're in the experience of being conditioned by and sometimes projected on with their villains. And then you have the final villain, the overall villain, which I call it, we're calling villains, but let's look at it with a little bit less of a serious attitude, which is the, call it the collective ego or the matrix itself in this realm that we're living in that's purposely, you know, steering people that lose track of their true self and what is real into following a pattern that is negative or that is limited or that sucks their energy, sucks their time, the collective ego and its institution. So there's many villains out there. There's the realm villain itself in the game that you're in. Then there's the challenges that you have with people and the challenges you have with self. And so what do you do with that? How do you empower yourself, transform yourself from the inside out? in order to make peace and then eventually smile at your villains and appreciate your villains because of what they've done to cause you to grow and commit to what is true for you and to become a better person. So we have many villains out there. That was just this moment's reference. Moving into the force. The force helps us do everything in life. The force, energy, frequency, vibration, with consciousness behind it. So you're a conscious living entity that harnesses the force like star wars says all the time through your spiritual will you control your mind body emotions and you harness energy and frequency which eventually creates reality but also dictates how you're interacting in the moment so some of us can learn jedi tools to harness the force with intention and with feeling and with divinity in order to make change in our life, to manifest in our life, and to influence and serve other people in our life, as well as to overcome our villains. Then we move into focused attention, which is a real key, so much so we put it on the front of the book in a little quote, because attention is your prime consciousness that actually directs the force, and that is our true self. Our mind and attention are not the same thing. Your mind is like a library or your brain is a library. Even the cosmos is a library of which you can access all kinds of rooms and levels and information. But you are the observer seeing all that. And so we need to learn how to control our attention within our own self and with what we're paying attention to outside because where attention goes energy go or attention goes energy flows so attention really is such a key inside and outside to who and what you're around so vitally important for those to then understand greater quantum navigation which is more of a new earth higher dimensional more metaphysical outlook on how do i create reality as well as how do i navigate myself more properly with the quantum field or with 
um, organic nature that isn't subject to linear time or limitations. So again, gets into manifestation tools as well as in how to see life and think more correctly. We've been trained the opposite in so many things. So we're always worried about how instead of what and why. So things like this so that we can plug in our GPS system to take to be taken to where we want to go in our experience and in our journey of our life. So that's a tool to help you think of manifestation or life itself in your journey like a vacation with a GPS or a destination that you need to go to where you plug it in and you're taken. So we're talking quantum navigation there that also leads you into the portal. Many ways to access the portal. When we think of portal, it leads us, of course, to what you see with the time travel next. But you are the portal. It is based on your vibration and your consciousness. And then there are portals as well, again, in the external, based on who and what you're around. And School of Ohm is designed to be a portal to help us fast track time, which is chapter um, six with time travel and looking at what that means again too you know when you think about time there isn't time it's relative but everything we wish to create is a place in space you are the space and the space is in front of you and the more you go vertical the more you're your authentic self and the more you have attention going back to some of our past chapters here inside the more you jump time you cause things to come quicker, easier, better for you in more of a quantum way as opposed to the linear. And so there's some steps in there with that, leading you to masterminding, which is now beyond just the self. It's also who am I attracting into my life? Who am I engaged with? How are we synergistic? How do we support one another? And do I have people around me to help fulfill my common goals or my wishes of, you know, not only who I'm around, but what it is that I'm aiming to strive for. And masterminding is so vitally important because it also helps you to become receptive to what you are not and welcome in gifts from others that, you know, you yourself either do not ex ex uh, excel at or, you know, that really don't want to be doing because you'd rather be doing something else that you're more passionate about and that you're more skilled at. So masterminding is really important. And of course, we've seen it in many books and talks out there, but it just had to go in here uh, because it is vital and it is key to the new earth because the new earth is really built through tribes. It's not as much about the collective as we think. It's to serve the collective of who participates and vibrates at the frequency and resonance to your mission and who you are and who we are but it's much more tribal. So masterminding is worth the time. And then we have the second rebel, second to last year up the chain to re rebelling, which is can make you think a lot of different things. And Greg explains this one very well too. Um, but rebelling is rebelling first against your, your own ego, saying no to it. No to that wounded child. No to that fight or flight attitude. No to that outside in living. But it's also rebelling against systems that you think are real and you think are the way when really maybe they're not the way and that the universe is infinite. So you have infinite possibilities rather than having to go through stuff that we've been taught. And sometimes we need to rebel against the system. And as we rebel, sometimes the people we love us don't like our transformations or our shifts. And so then there's a whole nother theme within that of how do I be myself with those around me as I'm transforming myself. And so that gets off into many categories. Rebels could go on and on. That's just one lens. Jaren's lens currently, ultimately to superpowers. Step nine, the culmination, the three, six, nine, the all, the divine, the you, God through you, the sage within you, your eternal nature, all number nine. And here we have it as superpowers because that's what we all possess. And so we want to engage those superpowers. We talk about different 
ways of doing so, different forms of what represent superpowers, including some systems. So we do in this book also get into, besides from many other tools, we share with you cosmic human design and some key info on that, some examples for your direction, because that's also a part of our superpowers that's very important so that we can be who we are. And within superpowers, yes, you can learn many things, but it all comes back to who am I really? What is this universe really? What is this realm I rent, I live in truly? And what are some principles that I can understand to help me in playing the game like I want to play it and like it's designed to be played? And how can I attract people, resources, information that support me in that journey to what? Your destiny, which you get to choose every moment. And it's up to you. It's not up to anyone else, inevitably. What is my destiny? And who am I in this journey? And who and what will I experience? And what all will I serve? And we can access superpowers just like the just like the real life Avenger theme we talk about, many of us are rising in these skills, rising in these cosmic understandings and rising in our heart power to live the dream, to live the heaven on earth and to represent it in image to others as the age of Aquarius is dictating and causing us to be. So that's just a little sum up. And if I did this 50 times, I bet you I'd have 50 different answers and 50 different ways I'd look at it. But just to give you some subconscious views on what's entailed in the RISE Code. And that is your manifestation moment for today.